Daily Dosers, it's Paige Hilkin again with my husband Christopher, and today we are going to be talking a little bit about our best practices when it comes to parenting. Our oldest is four and a half right now, so by no means are we experts in parenting. Uh, we have a lot to learn, but we do feel like we have learned some things. Um, so. We want to talk a little bit about that. I think that today we want to talk about an analogy that we learned um, early on, and that was that our parenting should reflect John the Baptist in his teaching and what his purpose was. John the Baptist's purpose was to prepare a way for Jesus to enter the hearts of the people. And our job and our calling as parents is to prepare a way for Jesus to enter their hearts when that day comes for them to accept Jesus as their savior. And so one of the ways that we can do that is by helping our kids practice biblical obedience. And Christopher's gonna expand upon that a little bit more, but we want to make sure that our kids are practicing obedience to us so that when they do accept Jesus into their heart, they're able to more readily and more easily obey the commands that he gives us in the Bible. It's a connection between the person that's in authority and and the child, right? In the same way that Israel were the children of God, that we are the children of our parents, that our that our kids are the are the students or the children of of us. And like and, and like Paige said, we've got a four year old, a two year old, a one year old, and the womb baby. And um, through all those things, we want to we our one of our goals is we want to tie the connection in the minds of our kids between rebellion and pain. Rebellion equals pain. Rebellion equals pain. Now, that's what discipline does. And the Bible says no one who incurs discipline thinks it's great in the moment. No one who gets sent to time out or gets a slap on the wrist at work or any. Even now, today, if I get corrected on something, I don't go, this is this is what's best for me. Now, in the long run, in the rearview mirror, I can see it. But anyone who incurs discipline is going to. Now, while we've got young kids, I've had a privilege of serving the high schoolers here on the Vista campus at North Coast for the past eight years. And and in doing that, you get to see the connection between students who understand the connection between an authority's rule and rebellion and pain and those who don't. And a lot of the time, those who don't is because the parents were way too uh, into being friends with them, but they've got friends. They need parents. They need people to, con to make that connection for them. Because at a young age, we can go, you going outside when I say no means you go in time out. It's a, it's a soft connection between rebellion and pain. And it's, it's not the stakes are low and the punishment isn't severe, but when they get older, it might be different. If they don't get that the authority says X, that means I do X. Then when they get older, let's say their boss says, be here on time, and they go, well, in the past, there's no connection between rebellion and pain, so I'll rebel and there'll be no pain. They don't have a job, their family doesn't eat. I'm being hyperbolic, but you understand what I'm saying. That's partly why we said discipline is really important to us. And if you're honest, you can discipline your kid every single day. Every single moment of the day, as much as you want it, because there's always something better they could be doing with every second of their time. But you'd be exhausted. They would feel brutalized. So we've kind of said, let's just stick and make it easy for us. Let's discipline the three Ds. And outside of that, try to offer correction, but let's not worry too much about it. What are the three Ds that we practice? The three Ds are disobedience, disrespect, and dishonesty. And so we ask ourselves, were our kids doing any of those things? And another question that we just ask related to that is were our kids disobeying against the will of God or were they just making us uncomfortable? Because especially as um, parents of lots of little kids, you know, they're bugging us all day long. And so making sure that we are really just abiding by those three Ds and that question helps us a lot to discipline in a biblical and godly manner. Discipline isn't discipline unless it's disciplined, which is weird. But when I discipline out of frustration, it's not actually discipline. That's that's overreaction. When I discipline out of anger, then it's not really discipline. That's not true correction. It's like a coach that sends someone to do something out of sheer anger or hatred or or wrath. It's it's not going to come across as love. It's going to come across as brutality. So the first thing I have to do as a parent, when I see one of my kids breaking one of those three Ds, my son is dishonest with me, or my daughter hits my other kid, which is disrespectful, or I say, my kids are yelling in the back seat. I'm not going to discipline for that because they're just screaming. But the moment I say, all right, guys, that's enough, then I've made a rule or I've made an obedience for them to follow. Then when they disobey that, I want to correct that. Why? So that the next the next authority figure in their life, they understand the connection between rebellion and pain. But I always want to do so out of a disciplined discipline. Even if I'm disciplining them, but I'm doing so out of frustration or yelling or anger, it won't feel like love. And that's what we want to do. They want to feel the connection between love and discipline, rebellion, and pain so that ultimately their lives can go better. We'll see you guys tomorrow.